One, two, one, two. You know how we do. It is BQ. This is the B Side Podcast brought to you by the Impact Lounge YouTube channel and Impact Lounge Podcast Network, wherever you stream your podcasts. Now, here on YouTube, I've been wanting to get into a more of a video podcast style, but I decided to kind of keep it old school here on the channel today because I actually ordered a new webcam that's just a uh, much better quality, and I'm kind of waiting on that to get here. I also have a brand new computer coming that I'm super excited about because you guys know this one's been kicking my butt for a while now, so I'm really, really excited. Um, my home office here, I'm making changes, got a new desk. I mean, really working on the presentation of the Impact Lounge YouTube content here soon, so I am super, super excited about all that. And I uh, hope you guys are too, because uh, I'm I'm ready to kick things up a notch. I've been I've been ready for a while, and uh, you know things would hold me back for various reasons. But you know, good change is coming. I'm I'm super excited about it, and uh, we will see what happens with all that. Uh, the Impact Lounge is the number one YouTube channel, number one podcast for the Impact Wrestling fan. So uh, wherever you're listening. Consider becoming a valued subscriber. Today, what I'm going to be getting into is the seven biggest questions heading into Slammiversary. Now, these are my opinions. You may have different questions, but these are ones that stand out to me uh, when I'm thinking about the direction of Impact Wrestling. So we're going to get into the podcast. Let's pay some bills real quick. Saving money can be pretty difficult at times, and if you're anything like me, you want to get the ball rolling on retirement, and the earlier you start, the better. Acorn has developed an app that rounds up your purchases on linked credit and debit cards, then sweeps the change into a computer-managed portfolio. What does that mean? If you purchase a cup of coffee for $3.51, it'll take that remaining $0.49, cents, place it into an investment account, and you'll never even miss it. If you want to make the most of your spare change and start investing today, Acorn makes it simple and easy to do so. Just click the link in the description or show notes to get started and invest in your future. All right, so we're going to get into this. Seven biggest questions that I have leading up to Slammiversary. Now, you guys may agree with me, disagree. You know, these are these are not what I think are the... All right, so we're going to get into these, and these are my seven biggest questions heading into Slammiversary. They may not be your seven questions, may not be any of your questions. These are just, these are just the one for me personally that I think are big ticket items. And, um, you know, when I get into these, they do have to do with the Slammiversary pay-per-view and, you know, maybe the short term after the pay-per-view. So what I'm saying is, you know, Something I'm invested right now is what are they going to do with Rohi Raju? You know, but he's not part of the Slammiversary card, so that's not something that I'm. That's obviously going to be on my list. This is very uh, built around the pay per view, going into the pay per view, and you know, even even a little bit after that as well. So first thing, first thing on my mind, what is the long term plan for the TNA Championship? Now Moose is holding this championship. I said it in one of my recent uploads. That even though my, you know, my assumption was that he was going to win that title, the King of the Mountain match at TNA, no place like home. And I can, I can tell you for certain that is what the plan was. You know, they had to throw a wrench was thrown in it with the pandemic and, you know, they had to, they had to make it work. And, you know, the way that they put the title on him, obviously this, you know, wasn't as entertaining or creative, you know, as it probably could have been, but that storyline did change. So is this title though, you know, the, the, the character of Moose as the, you know, delusional champion is, is one of the best parts of impact right now. Is he going to take this title with him in the future? Is he going to continue to defend it? Is it going to be a prop that pretty much goes away after this pay-per-view, you know, because he's going to get into some other kind of feud. He's taking on Tommy, Tommy Dreamer at Slammiversary. It is clear, clear, clear as day that he's going to face. He's not going to face somebody else, but somebody's going to pop up after the match. Clear as day. Uh, Tommy Dreamer is not the main part of this match. He's the, he's the opponent for opponent's sake, and I would have liked anyone else but him. But he is the opponent of this match. But there's going to be something bigger 
coming after this. I think everyone agrees. I think everybody sees that. But are they going to move on with the TNA thing? Now, people have been saying they want a TNA show, a second TNA show. And that's, I cannot see a world where that happens because you're taking TNA, which was the name of the company, and then Impact, which is the name of the company now, and creating two separate shows. That sounds like a branding mare to me. Two separate shows, two separate names, both tied into what the t- name of the company was. Sounds like a nightmare. So I can't see anything like that happening. So I, another thing I had talked about, I did a, a podcast a while back asking, are we getting TNA versus Impact? Now, this is something, this is, I thought they were going this direction. I truly did. I think some of you did as well. And they definitely didn't go that direction, you know, because I was thinking, oh, is, is Moose going to have a team TNA? I understand he's been, you know, anti-TNA, but now he's got the title. Is he going to have a team? But he's he's beating everybody. So, you know, unless there's some kind of huge end to Slammiversary where, you know, all the stars that he beat come back and join him, you know what I mean? Um, I don't see something like that happening, though. So that's a big one. What is going to be the status of that belt is it going to be the belt isn't going to be not a belt at all next thing on my mind are we getting the return of the knockouts tag team championships or not now many of us thought this is with the direction they were going and we were going to get some kind of culmination at slam anniversary but you know, I got to thinking about it. Slammiversary doesn't need the Knockouts Tag Team Championships. They've already got so much buzz and excitement going right now. Yeah, it would be another, you know, something else to add to the show that would make it even better. But they don't need them. They don't need those titles. And if you throw, you know, everything at Slammiversary, then you've got nothing for Bound for Glory. I got on here and said I would criticize impact or praise impact and i would hold them responsible for saying at the uh, rebellion show having a theme saying we're going all in and i said i'm gonna hold you again hold you to that impact slime reversary is going all in it they absolutely are they don't need the knockouts tag team championships i think i like what they're doing with just the gauntlet battle royal my, my concern with building the tag team division up, though, is that how how are you going to book the knockouts title from there? You know, if one person in a team is the number one contender, are we going to go the traditional wrestling role and uh, or traditional wrestling route and cause dissension within the team and all that? I don't want to see that. I just want to see camaraderie with their partners and... You know, don't be afraid to put the main belt on one of them, you know, so that that's that's my big concern with doing the the division. I think Bound for Glory is a good place to bring those titles back and it gives us a chance for a little bit of long term booking. You know, they were obviously putting two teams together, but we don't want them to throw a division together and throw titles on anybody that quick. So I want to see a tournament. I've said I want to see a tournament. And I want to see a long tournament, not a four-team tournament or some bullshit like that. So, are we getting those titles? Are we at least getting an announcement on those titles? That's what I want to know at Slammiversary. Give us something to work with. If you're going to announce the next pay-per-view and the next one is Bound for Glory, like give us, give us something. Next, who's going to be the mystery man in the main event? They have said that we're going to get a former champion. I have to believe one of those former champions. Yo, y'all know I can't record a podcast without the sirens going. Um, is is the participant going to be one of those former champions? Now, this is something I truly, 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 truly believe in. Whoever this mystery participant is in this match is going to win the match. That is the way wrestling works. The only alternative to this is that that person shows up and gets screwed and builds a feud and then that person becomes the number one contender then wins a title. But but this person is 
pretty much the next champion. And here's the interesting thing too. We've only got one heel in this match. If you have you have to believe whoever's debuting is going to be another babyface. Because that's usually how it is when you reintroduce yourself in the company. You know, whoever they bring is gonna get a pop. So you're gonna tell me you're gonna do a four person match with three baby faces and one heel. And you know, Jim Ross was the one that pointed this out a long time ago. When you do a triple threat match, they said it's it's best when you have two heels and one baby face. When you do more baby faces and heels, it makes the match difficult to book. And I can only imagine three baby faces and a heel. So the only way that you know the surprise participant doesn't win is if Ace Austin wins and screws that person. And then that person, as I said, is going to be the winner. Then they're going to take the title off Ace Austin. It's just gonna, the way it's going to work. Eddie Edwards and Trey are not going to win this match. Plain and simple. But who is it going to be? Do they swing for the fences? Do they go huge and, and bring Rusev, Rusev in, whatever they call him right now? That would be that would be the big the big move. I don't think it's going to be EC3 because I think he's going to show up, you know, um, to confront Moose after he beats Tommy Dreamer. The crappy thing about this card for me is that it's very predictable. For all the unpredictability in who's going to show up. The matches are predictable. As I, as I said, Moose is going to win. Uh, the North probably is going to win. Um, the part- mystery participant probably is going to win. You know what I'm saying? So, um, But the mystery man, who's going to be? My gut is, I think it's going to be Eric Young. That That's um, that's truly my gut. If, if they wanted to go a heel route, You know, I could see Mike Bennett coming in and winning the match, but it's going to be really interesting to see how they do this. And I'm I'm going to drop you got drop some knowledge on you guys here real quick. There, if you've seen Dave Penzer's tweet, you know he said we just oh we just did something that was really entertaining and and uh, uh, hilarious. There's supposed to be a cinematic match at Slammiversary. That's supposed to be. Very, very original in how they approach it. I don't know what the match is. All I know is it's not Moose and Dreamer. So I don't know who it's going to be. But we call it the cinematic matches now because even though Impact and Lucha Underground were doing this, they never had a good title for it. Now WWE has created a title and that's what we're calling it. So something like that is coming. Could it be the main event? You know, that could be interesting. Next thing on my mind, Trey. Is Trey going solo? Is he breaking off from the Rascals? Is this match at Slammiversary going to be his big break to move him into the main event scene? I don't see him as a main event talent, but I think they see him as something. I think he has to win the X Division Championship before he can move up the ladder, you know, be world champion. I mean, he's not going to win at Slammiversary. He's, he, he's just not. I got on here last month and said he said you know i said folks i can't give you details but there is a storyline with impact right now that they are winging they don't know how it's going to end they're straight winging it and you know now i can tell you it was the ace Austin, not the ace austin but the trey and madman fulton angle the the uh, trey at being attacked angle they had an opportunity to take chicken shit turn into chicken salad but it kind of went the other way around. They took, they had chicken salad and it turned into chicken shit. Like they had a storyline there that they, you know, weren't initially going to run with. It kind of fell into their laps. And we got that horrible reveal of Madman Fulton. As far as, you know, Jimmy Jacobs just, oh, it was uh, Madman Fulton attack. You know, there was nothing, nothing huge, nothing for us to get excited for when it happened. But that was the storyline I was talking about. They were, they were winging it. And um, instead of getting creative with it, that's what we got. And this is the disappointing thing. I'm, I'm going to get off the subject of Traker for a second. They're talking about all these surprises and people we're going to see. But every surprise so far has been a dud. You know, that was a dud. Um, Johnny Swinger and and uh, Chris Bay, even though I love Rohit Raju, I mean, him being the mystery partner, kind of a dud. I, I say it's a dud. What I mean by it is that you're teasing mystery opponents and mystery partners 
and you're just giving these people from the roster. And then uh, Crazy Steve, his match with cancel culture didn't happen. His mystery partners were going to be the Rascals. You know, and now this episode coming up, Moose is going to have a mystery tag team partner. You know, it, it's it's almost like they're just teasing us with bad reveals. <laughs> but hopefully they're a lot better. But um, again, with Trey, I want to say Trey had different music when he came out the other day. He's been a lot more serious. Uh, he hasn't been tied to the Rascals so much. You know, to where they're a bit of a comedy act at times. It seems like they they see something in him to break him off and do something. But, but if you're going to do that, make him Trey Miguel. Don't call him Trey. I hate the single name things. I think it's really bad branding as well because it doesn't. That person doesn't stand out. That person is never a household name if all your name is if your name is only Trey. Plain and simple. But we're going to keep an eye on his performance at Slammiversary. He could be one of the big winners of the show as far as how he stands out compared to everybody else and what he does on that stage. But he he could be in line for something, you know, where they where they say, hey, but you know, we're you're one of our homegrown guys. You're one of the guys we see that that we can really truly do something with. Next thing, will they stop signing aging stars and ECW stars? A lot of free agents have fallen and are falling into their laps. And this is a good, the, the pandemic is one thing that's actually helped impact to become a better company because what other free agents were they going to sign to make this company move? Now you've got, you had AEW start off and they just signed everybody. And now all these wonderful free agents have been released into the wild and AEW can't bring these guys on. They're going to bring some on, but, you know, it was a really prime opportunity for Impact to really sign some of these people because ROH and NWA aren't going to do it because they're not offering contracts right now. They're, they're releasing people. They're letting them out of their contracts. So it's, it's a major, major opportunity for Impact. But with this being said, are they going to stop with, we're going to bring these guys in in their 50s, with ECW, ECW hasn't been relevant for 20 years. I mean, you got to be 35 and up to remember ECW. And is that the fan base you're trying to appeal to when there's a whole younger generation and it doesn't even weren't even around for the downfall of TNA? Like why do you why do you keep trying to appeal to people who remember that period? ECW is a dead brand, dead. You know, there's no one checking for ECW. But we're still getting these guys. We're getting, you know, Sandman and Raven and these dudes. But I get it because, as I said, they just weren't a player in free agency. So that's why you sign RVD. You sign Rhino. You shot. You sign Ken Shamrock. Now, some people got on my, my channel in the comments when I did the video about Tommy Dreamer still being on television. People attacked me. They blasted me in the comments. Telling me I'm the only person who doesn't want to see Tommy Dreamer face Moose. Or I'm the only person who doesn't want to see Tommy Dreamer on television. Guess what? You're fucking wrong. Read the damn comments in the video. Read read the tweets. Read anything. A lot of people are sick of seeing this. And I'm not even that against them being on the roster. I'm not against them being on the roster at all. I mean, Rhino and RVD are good additions. I like Katie Forbes more, but I like RVD. You know, and Rhino's cool. But here's my issue. When was the last time Rhino lost? Crickets, right? I think he lost the moose at the Rebellion show. I, I don't know when that... I can't tell you when else he's lost a match. I don't have a clue. He beats everybody. It's it's like... Um, he was signed so Don Callis can see the gore. You know... Top five must-see moments... From Impact. The gore. Who, who is he... Who's beat Rhino? You know... I can I can only think of one loss in the company. And there, maybe there's another, but Rhino comes and wins. And he's not even the crazy thing. He's not even a part of any storylines. He just comes in and beats people. He's been in one storyline so far, 
That was with Moose. And he wasn't even in a storyline with RVD, really. Then RVD. Again, I like RVD. I like Kitty Forbes more. When is RVD lost last? Let's think. He lost at Slammiversary last year to Moose. He lost, I think he lost that match to Rhino. They had a hardcore match, which I found really boring. So I'm not exactly sure who won. I think, I'm pretty sure Rhino won. So that's two losses for RVD in the last year and a half. When, when has he lost since? Tommy Dreamer. He win. I mean, he doesn't win. You know, he, he, he pretty much always loses, but he keeps getting these high profile spots. Can you imagine if they brought in, let's say Chris Saban. Okay. You keep teasing all these people we're going to bring back. Why not give us, give us one name, give us one name of one person you got signed and have that person face Moose. And then when Moose wins and then you would, and then you introduce someone else. Now you have two real big reasons to get excited about that match. Cause no one, everybody just wants that match to be over so we can see who shows up at the end. But Tommy Dreamer does numbers. He does ratings. So Impact continues to roll with him. But he comes out with the polka dot pants, the the kendo stick. It's just played. And someone left me a comment. I had to laugh when, uh, on the I guess in the Twitch chat when they announced that match. <laughs> someone in the Twitch feed said BQ is going to be pissed. Eh, I knew it was coming. But I'm, I'm definitely not super jazzed about it. But now that you have these free agents fall in your lap. Are you going to keep signing these old guys? We'll see what happens. Two more. Who's going to be the commentary team at Slammiversary? I'm really happy with what Madison Rain is doing. Uh, I, I really, honest to God, think Josh Matthews is doing the worst work of his career right now. It's just time for something new. It is. And it's crazy because I used to say I didn't like Josh and the Pope. I don't know what the hell I was thinking because you listen back to Josh and the Pope. They were great. And Josh had a lot of more passion back then. Uh, they they did a flashback a couple weeks ago with Galloway versus Lashley. They weren't trying to piggyback off anything at all. And, um, man, Josh had so much fire in his voice. And I was at that show. I, I saw my son and myself in the crowd. I thought that was cool. So much fire in his voice. Like, he's doing his worst work ever. Madison Reigns carrying him on commentary. And uh, it's not, I don't, I really don't blame him. I really think Don Callis did something to him to switch up his play by play style. And now it's just awful. It's just awful now. So people are talking, oh, are we, are we going to get Joey Styles? There's a reason I want Joey Styles and a reason I don't. The number one reason I, I do want him is because I think they need a fresh voice i was watching a show last night and they were getting into a marketing portion and they said something that god dang i've been saying this they said it's never a rebrand until you fully rebrand that's what i've been saying as long as josh is the play-by-play guy it is dixie carter's tna people are going to keep tied into that he that's the last domino that needs to fall for it to be a full rebrand so that's one of the reasons I would want someone like Joey Styles. The reason I don't want him is because if we get him, Don Callis is going to be his color guy. He's not going to let anyone else do it. It's not going to be D'Lo because he's doing this Ace and Nates thing, apparently. And Dave Penzer was really good on play-by-play -play at the TNA show, but uh, he's obviously ring announcing now. So I feel like Don Callis is coming back, and that's really disappointing for me because you, you guys know I can't stand him. On commentary. So it, it just seems like we're, we're going to get one or the other changing. I just I just want the whole commentary team to change. Now, is Josh going to call Slammiversary? Or are they going to fire him or kick him out or whatever at the beginning of the show for who else, who, whoever the replacement is? I was told Madison was going to call Slammiversary, but now she's teased that she's going to compete at Slammiversary. So I think Madison has something big planned I thought it was going to be a reformation of the beautiful people, but I guess Angelina Love resigned in April. So unless there's some kind of change there, you know, I could see something like that just because she seems to be teasing that she's got something going on. And it was very under her breath, but she she delivered a line the other day that 
basically insinuating press with the number one contender's gauntlet. So we'll see. Last thing I've got, who's going to beat the North? I've been pointing this out on Twitter. Is that you would have thought that in this year title reign with the North that they had programs with everybody. Same with Taya Valkyrie. She had the title for over a year. You would have thought she had a program with every knockout in the company. But she didn't feud with nobody but Jordan Grace and Tessa Blanchard. Yeah, she defended against most of the other knockouts, but she didn't have any programs with anybody. And this is the same with the North. You know, they had this program with LAX. They only wrestle the Rascals. That's the only time they defend the titles. Against the Rascals and versus makeshift teams. Tessa and Eddie. Eddie and Marafuji. Shamrock and Callahan. You know what that tells me is that Impact Creative and Management doesn't have any confidence in these other teams that they have. I could be wrong, but I don't think they've ever defended against TJP and Falaba. They lost to him in a non-title match. I don't think they've defended against them. And even if they did, they could have done a program with those guys. Nothing. No program or match with Reno Scum for the titles. Nothing with Triple XL. Nothing with uh, what other team we got left. The Deaners. Nothing with them. They defended against them in that weird match where Cody wasn't even involved. They never defended against OVE. Against the Desi Hit Squad. You would have thought in a year they would have had all these programs where they just beat everybody. So, I can tell you guys this. This is a little more exclusive news for you guys. I'm being told that in the next several months, they're going to be working on building up the tag team division. That it's going to be one of the focuses. So, right now they're working on the knockouts. The uh, main event scene at Slammiversary is looking to, to get a shot of adrenaline. And then they're going to be working on the tag team division. And I could see him maybe at the end of the year working on the X division. Because that's an easier one to build up with all the indie talent. And maybe they'll even have the balls to kick off 2021 with uh, Destination X as a pay-per-view. I don't think so, though. But they are going to be building up the tag team division, so keep an eye on that. But there was these other feuds, other matches just left on the table that never happened. They, They did nothing with. And that's disappointing. They just had those teams fighting each other, fighting for nothing. So none none of them are going to beat the North. So who are they going to bring in? Is it going to be Gallows and Anderson? It feels like that. And that's probably who's going to take the titles off the North ultimately. Uh, there's tag teams that I want to see. I said I want to see the Awakening. I want to see Primo and Epico. So we'll see what tag teams come in or if they're what they're doing. You know, Maybe we'll get... Swan and Mac back in the division at some point. You know, they were going to have a, an angle with the North, but that didn't really happen. But the North, as good as they've had great matches, but no great feuds. So this is the opportunity for Impact to give them a great feud and something that the, us as the fans can enjoy. That's it for the B-Side podcast this week. I want to know thoughts in the comments about anything I've said and or any anything you've got to say. Um about some of your biggest questions and, and what you what you see coming with Slammiversary. I will be reviewing, not reviewing, I'll be uh, previewing Slammiversary soon. And then uh, after Slammiversary, I'll be doing a podcast. I'm not going to be getting away from the reviews here at the Impact Lounge. Uh, that's It's just uh, it just played out, uh, you know, match by match reviewing the show. We're going to, you know, myself and TW are going to work on a kind of a different uh, type of podcast. And after Slammiversary, I'm... I'm I'm going to do things a little different after Slammiversary, too. I'm not just going to review the show. You know, so look forward to that. Uh, This is the B-Side, and I will check you guys next time. Peace.